Okay, today I'm gonna review Life 3.0 by Max Tegmark. I think Max Tegmark is the, probably the perfect person to write a book about AI, especially a general book about AI that covers all the areas of interest, all the, the topics that AI covers. I mean, it's so broad, but Max Tegmark might be the optimal guy to take on the task. So Max Tegmark is a professor at MIT, but it's really the stuff he does outside of his teaching that um, I think makes him perfect. He founded the Future of Life Institute, which is uh, it's funded by Elon Musk, or at least initially it was, and they do research into a lot of topics, but they're really, uh, their major push right now is AI safety research, and uh, they're spending a lot of money providing grants to people all, all over the world to study that topic. Uh, Max Tegmark also organized a Silimar. It was this AI conference in Puerto Rico that was really the first major uh, conference or major scientific gathering that really pushed AI safety research into the mainstream. It used to be kind of fringe, you know, people talking about Terminator and that kind of thing. And they really pushed it into the, the mainstream of science and legitimized it for a lot of people and there he kind of organized a lot of people together to push them towards uh, taking on the task of AI safety research. Um, he also is involved in consciousness stuff with AI. I was watching um, another conference on consciousness and that Max Tegmark just popped up. He's on the panel somehow so he's really He's in a lot of stuff. I mean, he's the consciousness, math, and physics, uh, the AI. And he has a really good perspective because I think he, he's involved in so many different aspects of it. He really can see the, the broad picture of AI. So the book starts off by giving a fictional narrative of this group called the Omega Team. And they discover, or they create, the first artificial intelligence. And it chronicles um, their experience and what they do and how they go about using that AI at first and it's a just kind of this fictional base that gives Max Tegmark's views on how AI will come about and it provides a really interesting start for the book because it captures your attention immediately and really gets you engaged and introduces a, a lot of topics in AI and I thought this part this was one of the most interesting parts of the book even though it's fictional and the rest of the book is non-fictional he based this he bases this story on what he thinks will actually happen and so it's it's a really interesting uh kind of narrative about artificial intelligence and it's one of the things i remember the most about reading this book and it it really gets you engaged really quickly because it's so uh it's so thought provoking and interesting that it brings you right into the material and you just want to read more and then right after this fictional narrative after you're captured and you're you're invested it moves on and it kind of goes and talks about the, the basics of intelligence and it lays out a framework for describing artificial intelligence and what that actually means. And then the book transitions into talking about the future of AI. And the first part, it talks about the near future. The near future really is the stuff that's in development right now, the stuff that might come out next year or two years from now. So it covers industries that are changing, um, all the applications of AI, talks about Google and the DeepMind and how they beat the world champion at Go, and then uh, chess, and it talks about a, a, lot of, a lot of the accomplishments and breakthroughs going on in art, artificial intelligence right now. And that's interesting, but a lot of that I had heard about um, somewhat. Where this book really gets interesting for me are the next few sections, where it goes into a little bit farther into the future the next part talks about the intelligence explosion, which is something that I believe uh, Ray Kurzweil talked about a lot, the singularity. Max Tegmark doesn't really call it a singularity, though I think he mentions it, but it's really just talking about where artificial intelligence becomes smart enough to redesign the, an artificial intelligence. And so you get this feedback loop where we, get a, we quickly get a, a ramp up in the quality and the uh, abilities of artificial intelligence. And then from this, he goes on to the next 10,000 years, which seems like a, a really long time. But this was some of the most interesting stuff about AI, because if you really start thinking about AI and what it could do, if AI can make machines that make machines and these machines can build things, then you could quickly get 
a reduction in cost of a lot of construction and a lot of things that are not currently feasible, like spacecraft and things of that nature, very large scale industrial projects, um, just because you could replace the labor so cheaply. And he and Max goes into a, so many different scenarios of how AI might um, come to take a bigger role in the world. And he has all these different viewpoints. And this it's really interesting uh, to read about because no matter what you think would happen, he probably talks about that. And then a lot of other scenarios that could also happen. And so this is really engaging. It's very sci-fi. There's a lot of um, things in there that you see in movies and all kinds of things. Um, but this was a really interesting, engaging uh, part of the book. And if you really like this part of the book, there's another book, I'll review it later, called um, The Beginning of Infinity by David Deutsch. And uh, this book goes into a lot of the, the far out stuff that could happen in the future if you're interested in that this part of Life 3.0. Um, after the the future sections, the book goes into AI goals and kind of compares biological goals and the goals that we currently have and then engineering goals, artificial intelligence goals and how we can combine these and what the differences are and where the challenges might be for artificial intelligence and, and how we can incorporate all the various goals into the AI. It's a really interesting challenge to create an AI that can interpret what our goals are, and then act on them since our stated goals are usually not exactly what our real goals are. And it's an interesting problem that has big impacts on AI safety and creating powerful AI systems that will fall into alignment with uh, our ethics and our views on what should be prioritized in a society. After this section, Max talks about consciousness, and this I thought was a really interesting uh, topic. If you've watched some of my previous videos, I talked about consciousness before in AI systems, but this is really interesting. It's just what it is, why we should care about it. If if we want AI to expand into the universe, if they are going to send them out into space and you know replicate, then it's important that they're conscious so that there's an, a moral or ethical value to creating this artificial intelligence explosion. And so he goes into a lot of the theories of consciousness and whether AI systems could be conscious. And he doesn't really have a firm view. He just covers a lot of the viewpoints. And it's really interesting because he kind of gives a, a good overview of uh, consciousness and artificial systems and whether it's possible. Really engaging stuff. Really interesting. And the book finishes off by talking about the Future of Life Institute and some of the other things that Max Tegmark is working on. When the book is over, you kind of just want to go out and read 10 more books on AI because he, he doesn't go into too much detail on any one subject, but he has, he has his way of covering all of these topics in AI, but he'll just definitely move from the most interesting part of every topic so that it just captures your attention right at the beginning and just you just become more and more interested in every part of AI. And, and when you're done, you just go and you buy more books to read about and to get into more detail about AI. So I really like this book. It's one of my favorite books on AI. If you haven't read a book on AI and you're interested in the subject, this is the perfect book to start with because it's so broad and it covers so many topics. You can really narrow down exactly what you like or what you're the most interested in. Um, so I, I highly recommend this book. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's one of the best books I've read in a while. I read it again. I would recommend that you get the print version. I first read this book, or I first I listened to the book first, and then I got the, the paper copy. And there's a lot of charts and uh, graphics and, and things in the book that you'll want the physical copy um, to get the most out of the material. But definitely pick this book up if you're interested in the topic. So uh, that's all on the book. Uh, like, subscribe. I got some more videos coming up. I got more reviews on books, more topics on AI. I'll probably spend a while talking about AI because I've got four or five books left uh, on the subject. So stick around and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.